Ross Chastain, in my opinion, has been the most fun driver to watch in about the last two, three years of NASCAR, for sure, but honestly, in the last 20 or so years of NASCAR. And I think that what we're seeing now may be the start of the next chapter for Ross Chastain. Or it might be a nice little footnote in the crazy story that he's put together so far. Either way, I think that this is something worth looking at. Because I think Ross Chastain might be more dangerous to the competition than he has ever been before. But first, let's look back to how he was and may still be. The story before is that Ross Chastain is out of control. He's a menace to society, and everyone from Denny Hamlin to J. Jonah Jameson is going to want to go after and stop Ross Chastain from his menacing madness. And I kind of get it. Ross Chastain was in a ton of different incidents with different drivers, many of which completely avoidable. And... In doing so, he also became the scapegoat for just about anything that happened. Drivers were starting to blame him for stuff that he wasn't even a part of or for their own mistakes. And it was something to behold. And I think that it really gave him a main character energy. And I still think that he is a superstar in the making that they just need to market him a little bit better. But... The thing is, these incidents were causing him not to take advantage of really fast and good runs. And I can think of no run better to epitomize this than Darlington in the spring of 2023. Even if Ross doesn't win this race by racing Kyle Larson clean or just not making a dumb mistake, he still has an amazing points day, which helps him towards the championship in the big picture when it comes to the regular season point standings. And that's something a lot of drivers have trouble with, but Ross has a huge problem with, or at least may have had a huge problem with, and that is looking at the big picture. The big picture is Ross Chastain wants to be an NASCAR Cup Series champion. The ultimate rags to riches story of a guy going from a watermelon farmer to a low or back of the pack driver to a champion at the highest level of his sport. Well, he would be a lovable underdog story for many if he didn't go out of his way to really just do anything he wants and piss off a ton of drivers and in turn their fans. There's a reason drivers were blaming him for everything, and it's because they were sick of it. They were done with it. Everyone from Kyle Larson to Denny Hamlin to, like I said, J. Jonah Jameson would want the menace off the street, Ross Chastain down. And it's fun in the short term, but it's bad in the long term because Ross is going to have rivals. He's going to have people who will go out of their way to mess up his race, who will go out of their way to try and fight him, even if he'll defend himself, which... I got to say, I really like. And while he is still a lovable underdog in a lot of ways, he is very hateable for many too because of this. Who wants to root for somebody that their own driver wishes was taken out every week? There's a lot of NASCAR fans who are not going to look past that. If he were to bump Chase Elliott out of the way, Chase Elliott's fans are not going to look past it. The same way Denny Hamlin's fans haven't and Kyle Larson's, and just about every other driver he has raced for a win. This all kind of culminated with the little talk that Justin Marks had with Ross Chastain after Darlington that I think in a lot of ways was spurred by Rick Hendrick saying that this kid needs to be put in line. And now, with that, we are starting to see that next phase in Chastain's evolution. Heading into this season, Chastain had two wins. Coda, a road course that's like no other track in NASCAR. And Talladega, a super speedway that races every single one of its races differently than any other that's ever been raced in NASCAR. Not really a great amount of wins and a great catalog to be shown for why Ross Chastain is getting both the press, attention, as well as as the championship consideration that he is. But this all changed with the third win at Nashville Super Speedway. Nashville Super Speedway is different than a lot of tracks, but it is his first true oval win that wasn't a Super Speedway. 
it races a lot like a mile and a half though on concrete is probably a bit more difficult just because it's not like many tracks that Chastain and the Cup Series races on on a regular basis. But he won. He beat Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, and a host of others who wanted to and tried to go against him and beat him outright. He snapped an over one year winless streak, locked himself into the playoffs, and now has given himself a pressure-free run of nine weeks up to the playoffs where he doesn't have to worry about winning. He doesn't have to worry about finishing and points and all of that. He can go for broke. And I think this is where we're going to find out if Chastain really has changed or not. When he has nothing to lose for nine straight weeks and doesn't have to worry about anything until September. Or... Does he think of the long-term big picture? This is going to be crucial in my opinion. I don't want people to overlook it. But we may be seeing a new Ross Chastain. He has patience, but he's also aggressive, as was shown in this race. And while it's only a couple races shown, and all of us were wondering what was wrong with Chastain when he wasn't running up front, causing issues, or possibly getting wins, now all that's been wiped away. Winning cures everything. Look at a couple of the moves that he made during this race. He went three wide through the middle to pass lap traffic late in the race while Martin Truex Jr. was running him down. That seems like a Ross Chastain move. It seems like a move he would pull at any time of the race, not the last time of the race. But earlier in the day, he didn't lose his cool when Noah Gragson was holding him up, specifically so that Tyler Reddick could get the lead and end up getting the stage and stage point in the process. Chastain could have moved him out of the way, could have forced him up, but instead he raced him clean. He decided to back off when it mattered and save his stuff for later. While it's only a one race sample size, it does show that he's matured in a sense that he's starting to understand giving and taking. He can be aggressive, it just doesn't have to be every single lap of every single race. He can lose the race on any lap, he can only win it on the last. And that balance, long term, will be so dangerous to the competition. And the one driver that I can think of to compare to him is not Dale Earnhardt like many will say, but Kyle Busch. If you remember Kyle Busch early in his career when he raced for Hendrick in the early years of Gibbs, many were saying, man, that kid is talented. If he could just keep his head on his shoulders and think a little bit more, he will be the most dangerous driver possibly in NASCAR history for winning a championship year in and year out. And you know what? He put his foot in his mouth so many times as a young driver. But later on in his career in the 2010s, he started to become a noticeably more patient and different driver. A fair driver. Somebody that I think the garage really respects. And what do you know? He became one of, if not the best driver of not only that decade, but one of the best drivers ever. And I think that Chastain can do the same thing. He can learn from the mistakes of guys like Kyle Busch and turn it into something that will really make a legendary career. Listen, I think Chastain has the ability to be a superstar in this sport but it's gonna take time. So now, in the meantime, I wanna hear from you. Let me know what you think of Chastain. Do you think he's evolving or is this just a one-off? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.